Hey, uh, Kevin and I are here to talk about the Harvey Awards. The Harvey Awards. I guess nominations have been going on for about a year now, uh, but the <laughs> uh, winners will actually be announced at Baltimore Comic Con uh, in a couple weeks, uh, August 28th. Uh, they're mm-hmm. going to do theirs, and they're going to have the award winners, which is nice. But we thought we'd go quickly over some of the nominees, since it's getting so close, and talk about a little about some surprises, some good uh, nominations as well. And and kind of like the Oscars, there's a lot of uh, people getting awards that... Or, at, or at least nominations. nominations. We don't know about yeah, awards. Right. We don't know about winning yet. But that, That's more of a body work when yes. really the individual issues aren't that great or whatever. But right. anyway. Oh, and the nominations and voting are done by comics professionals, mm-hmm. so... Whether or not, like, it'll be interesting to find out whether or not pe- how much people pay attention to their peers' work. Totally. Like, some of this is based on name recognition, but when it comes to the winners, did anybody actually look up and and read them and every yeah give it a and, chance and and really truly compare them? So yeah, uh, first on our list here is best writer. Uh, let's go through the list here. We've got Jason Aaron for Scalped, which I've talked about multiple times, and that's really great. Uh, but then the next one down is Jeff Johns for Blackest Night, and I know the sales numbers are great. People read it, but would you consider that best writing? That's kind of like Titanic winning, uh, getting you know, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's it made a lot of money, so therefore it needs to have been nominated for best picture, or even I I'll say it's it's another thing, or even A New Hope being nominated for yeah. best picture. Right. You know, it, it just because it made a lot of money doesn't mean it needs to be best picture. Um, and Avatar didn't win, so hey, there we go. There we go. Uh, Robert Kirkman for Walking Dead makes um, sense. Makes sense because it, it, it's consistently good. And, yes, and everything. solid writing. Yeah. Um, I've not. You've not read. I'm, I'm not familiar with Jeff Kenny. I, maybe I should be, and perhaps based on all the nominations he got in multiple categories, I'll check it out. Yeah, but Diary of I just Wimpy can't Kid. speak to it. Yeah, I, and. and no, no, it's a comic. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Oh, they yeah, just made a film. They made a film out of it. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. And then Mark Wade, who I've actually, I really like Irredeemable. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. They're, and and the, the two titles he's doing together for that. And again, you can see that it's peer nominations as well because Boom Studios is actually getting recognition. Exactly. Um, and it's sometimes harder for the indies to actually really get their name out there. Now, granted, it's Mark Wade, who at least was well known before becoming the head of Boom Studios, but still. Exactly. That's and, something to... Uh, but yeah, so I mean, uh, four out of five are, are pretty big names. Yep. Um, and then and then there's one... Well, I don't know that Jason Aaron was really a big name before Scalped, necessarily. I no, mean, that, that was one of his first books. Yeah, that but, one really launched him. But then he's since then he's moved on to doing everything yes. in Marvel. <laughs> That's um, true. Um, here, the, the category Best Artist is probably going to be one of the toughest to vote on. Yeah. Uh, it's it's loaded. And... So first up, Robert Crumb before the Book of Genesis work. But again, even so, I mean, he's still such a name in the industry mm-hmm. for, what, five decades now? Yeah, and but, you know, Book of Genesis itself was such a long labor of love. I have it, and, it, yeah. and it's a gorgeous book. It's, it's really, really, really Yeah, and it's really different nice. from anything he really had done before with the the, the topic anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, Guy Davis from P- BPRD. Um, everyone seems... I, I've, I've still not really read much of BPRD, uh, everyone seems to really like his work. I know he did did the art for um, uh, the Matt Wagner Sandman, uh, Golden yeah. Age Sandman series, right? Um, Which I liked a lot. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I don't. I flip through BPRD every so often, but it's not one that really grabs me. But I can at least appreciate the art. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not bad art. It's just yeah. And obviously, it's being nominated by his peers. Um, Brian Fees or Fies. Fies. Whatever Oops. happened to the world of tomorrow? Yeah, um, I don't know. I've not a very, read that. a very independent Abrams Comic Arts publishing. Um, I will give them the benefit of the doubt there. I just I there, can't. There's speak multiple to it. nominations for that too. Yeah, um, but then we get into some really good stuff. David Peterson for Mouse Guard. Yeah, and Mouse Guard is incredible for the detail and the work. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And the, yeah, these last three are the really, really detailed. You know, David Peterson. Then we got Frank Quietly uh, for Batman and Robin, which. Right. The only problem I have with that is he only did two or three issues. Right. But, and we don't know, I mean, maybe just for that work alone, they decided that it was worth it. Sure. And he d- is a great artist. And then closing with J.H. Williams III for his run on Detective Comics, which again was fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely incredible for and, pushing that art along. The, and that art pushed kind of the boundaries of the, of the form in a lot of ways. Yeah. It was, it was really pretty and just really well done. Um, let's go quick. Yeah. Best, best cartoonist, which we kind of, we, we've, determined that it's best writer and artist? I guess because it's very similar, but um, the big name that jumps off the page there is Darwin Cook for doing uh, writing up Richard Park's uh, 
The Hunter, uh, mm. which was a great graphic novel on IDW. And I, I know the uh, sequel is coming out within the next few months because they released a, little, a special issue uh, broadsheet uh, oh, nice. sized uh, $2.50 advance, which was really nice. And everyone loves the Darwin Cook. Um, Jeff Kinney again for Diary of yep. a Wimpy Kid and The Last Straw got nominated. Uh, and The Muppet Show, the Muppet comic book if artist, you, uh, if you Frank Langridge. If you haven't read that, it's it's excellent. I mean, yeah. it really, it's, we talked about it. but I think that really helped... That part- I, it really helped Boom Studios make a lot of money on something that people weren't sure if adults and kids would both really grab onto it, and it it was went like gangbusters. It it was a property that hadn't been done correctly in a long time. Yeah. Uh, for comics, uh, then we have uh, David Mazzucchelli, uh for uh, Asterius Polyp, um, which got a lot of acclaim in 2009. So did. not a surprise that he got nominated. It did. did it did it win an Eisner? I thought it did. Not sure now. Um, but and then and then Seth, I don't know. Oh, uh, it's a drawn and quarterly comic. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So don't know. I don't. Um, I would. I would say a serious polyp might, might likely win in that one, but who knows? Yeah. Um, okay. We're gonna skip over letters and anchors and all that other stuff. Uh, obviously, very important to the job. Just not something we can speak to as far as nominations go. Exactly. I, but best new series is something that's very much worth discussing because, again, really solid nominees up and down. Yeah. Batman yeah. and Robin for Grant Morrison and quietly initially. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chu, which got everybody seems to love and very great art and writing. Uh, Irredeemable, Boom Studios, again. Mark Wade. It, uh, Sweet Tooth, which so, some people Jeff, really love, and it's what Jeff Lemire. Jeff Lemire, uh, yeah. and again, it's getting, getting a lot of attention. And then Unwritten, which is uh, one of the newer uh, Vertigo titles that seems to be really hitting its stride, really doing yeah. a lot of fun stuff that people like. That was one of the. F- uh, ones as soon as the first series was collected for volume one, everybody was like, "You really need to pick up this book." Yep, yep. Accepting that people hadn't gotten the initial issues, but yeah. Yeah, well, a lot, a lot of Vertigo books take a few trades or a few issues to get people going. Right. Um, that's why, you know, in a world of collecting of comics, usually the first few issues of a Vertigo book tend to be worth more than <laughs> at other ones because no one gets them. Yeah. <laughs> and then they go this away. This is true. Uh, let's. Uh, Did you want to discuss best continuing or limited, which is very odd because. I, well, let, let's no. Actually, let's. You want to skip ahead? Well, we can do that. I mean, yeah. Best I mean, continuing. Beasts of Burden, which is a great book. Um, I think a lot of people are considering that more in the graphic novel form, just because of the beautiful way they released it with yeah. the hardcover. Yeah. Um, but again, Invincible gets uh, nominated again. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Scalped, Walking Dead. I mean, it's just it's all of that. Oh uh, yeah, Ganges by Fantagraphics. I've not read that, um, but. Again, it's a it's a nice, you know, it's not nods to some good books. Yes. Um, yeah, we don't have to do the. Yeah, no. Uh, um, this one was odd. Here's the weird thing. Yeah. There's a special award for humor in comics, which makes sense. You want a humorous comic to really get nominated. One of the and you know you get uh, first be, the very first one, Evan Dorkin and Jill Thompson for Beasts of Burden. Not a humor comic. Um, I, I. I can't I, think of like even humorous moments that it really stand out. I would give it to a kid. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it's, you know it's not it, it, it's not a kid's comic, and humor doesn't have to be for kids. But uh, the rest of these seem mostly kids' comics, um, except for well Scott, Scott Pilgrim. Pilgrim. But yeah. yeah, again, humor yeah is involved um, there. But yeah, there's not really any humor in Beast of Bird, which no. seems like an odd just because it has dogs, talking dogs and cats. Talking animals doesn't make it humor. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Uh, so just finish it off in there again. Uh, Muppet Show comic is in there. Yeah. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. So Diary of a Wimpy, Wimpy Kid. I guess I got to check that out. Yeah. It's getting a Given lot of attention. Given how much the peers seem to like it. Um. Uh, so I, that was pretty much like that was the core ones we really wanted to get over. Oh, I guess there's one yeah, very odd category we have to cover really quick because it's best single issue. Or story. Yeah. So you have full-length graphic novels up against single-issue comics, which seems kind of unfair. Uh, because you know, for a single issue, well, in uh, general, you, you know, an entire graphic novel like a serious polyp, you're going to get much more invested in that than than say even a standalone Jonah Hex number fifty. Yeah, even as a standalone story, Jonah Hex number fifty, what max twenty pages? Yeah, really. Yeah, for that twenty twenty two about. Yeah. Um, but then again, Richard Stark's Parker the Hunter, a great graphic novel, beautifully presented in hardcover, and yeah, again, up against Jonah Hex number fifty. Yeah. Um, so I mean that that's uh, there, there's some other awards. Check them out online. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure the Harvey Awards will be uh, it'll be uh, announced August, August 28th, 28th at Baltimore Comic Con. So uh, check it out. See if that's there's anything there that uh, 
interests you, you it's probably worth uh, reading anything you, you're not familiar with. I know I'll be checking out a few titles now. I definitely will. So let us know what you think of them. Thanks a lot. Backroom Comics Podcast.